Hey everyone, it's Hannah Rose and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I am going to be doing another tutorial. So I guess it's not that different, but like I, I haven't done a tutorial in a while. So this is going to be back to something new, different, sort of, I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I'll be doing another tutorial on, on this drawing program. It's uh, Clip Studio Paint and yeah, so I'm going to this is the program that I'm using. It's not sponsored or anything. It's just the program that I've been using to do all my speed paints recently. So yeah, and today I'm not really going to be teaching uh, teaching you how to like draw any particular thing. I'm just teaching you how to use it, like use the program. In case you're interested in in um, using this program for for yourself. So I'm just going to be going through like all of all of the tools here, all down the side. So, um, yeah, I'll just go down from, like, the top to bottom. So, the first tool is a magnifying glass. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. All you really do is just click the screen to where you want to go. Now, for me, I usually just pinch and zoom to go in and out. It's, it's easier for me, but you can do whatever you want. The second one is the hand, and you can... This is moving around your canvas. I, again, I don't really use this one too much. Um, and then this one is sort of like a... A director of like where like let's say you uh, draw an object like you have like a little scribble thing here but you don't like where it's placed so you can hit this thing right here and you can move it around and then you have this th this uh, little arrow thing again it's pretty much exactly the same tool you just can move around stuff um, and then there is also this tool where you can make sort of like a box around an object and you can and you have like a variety of different choices like to edit it I guess um, I again I don't often use this this tool but you, you can if you want if you want to like do a fine edit of something or if you want to like get rid of it or something like you can automatically get rid of the thing by clicking this here and that instantly gets rid of it um, and then you also have the magic wand tool which is Pretty much exactly also the same thing as the little box thing. You click it and it comes up with a bunch of different options. Um, and then if you don't, don't want any of that, just click away. Click on the on the gray here. That's not the canvas. And oh yeah, also on the top here, right underneath window, there are there is two arrows. The one that is the one the one that is pointing like this is the back arrow and you click that to get rid of what you just did and the one here is to bring back what you just did if you realize you made a mistake by getting rid of it and then so the next tool is the eyedropper tool so let's say you have like this color so let's say you um you have black right and then so you go into the little boxes down here and you want to do a pinkish kind of color and so you go to here and then you click I don't know, like a, a bluish color here and then you realize oh wait I want that pink color again so you can zoom in on the pink go to the eyedropper and click and see down here the two boxes it goes right back to the to the pink so you will always have a chance to like find find that color again um, and then I, I'm just gonna bring this back to black and then uh, the tool that I use all the time to do my, my speed paints and whatever, like this is the most used tool for, for me at least, is the pen tool. It's basically just like the main drawing type. You can, um, you can change the, the, the different types. I always stay to the G pen, but that's just my preference. You can also go to the like brush size here, um, but I, I use brush size for this, so like you can make it thicker or thinner. I usually stay on five because that seems like a good a good size for me. Um, and it all kind of depends what you're doing. Also, you can change the opacity to it too. So, like, you can have a solid line like this. You could change the opacity to something like maybe 56, and that changes it completely. Or you can go even like um, later, do like 23 or something like that. This is good when you have to do like an understroke of something, meaning that like if you want to like 
I think probably more this would apply to drawing like face or whatever. You would uh, you would change the opacity lower to something like this. So you can draw something like that, kind of get like the under um, under sketch of something. So then you can go back later and do like a cleaner sketch with something more bold, like the 100% opacity. Uh, the next thing is pencil. So so you can see sort of like different between like pen and pencil. The pencil is very uh, is a lot more grainy and it works exactly the same as how the pen works. So if you want to like um, edit anything or like change anything, then just you can just go into this little toolbar here, right, where it has like the three pencil icons and this and the one with like the three line, like the almost fork looking thing. Um, beside the pencil is the different types of pencil you can get. Um, the, the pencil with a gear beside it is, is like the editing of it. And then the pencil with like the little like um, bullseye looking thing is just the size of, uh, of it. And then same thing applies for the brush tool, but brush is a lot more thicker. And it is like a lot, actually has a bit of like a gradient effect here, uh, you can see there. So this is sort of more for like bold stuff. I don't, I rarely use the pencil and brush tool, but again, that's just me. You can do whatever you want. And then the next is the, is a spray paint tool or like the, the shading tool. I, I, I use it for, for shading, but like this is the, yeah, the spray paint tool where you can make, make shading and like I, you would see in my spray paints, I do a lot of shading with, with this. Again, there's different types of, oh yeah, airbrush. There's different types. I always use the, the hard one, but you can use any of these types if you want. It depends what kind of effect you want. Um, and then brush size, again, it's just sort of like the, um, whatever of it, and like the brush density, like I have it at 10 here to make sort of like a nice shady effect. But if you wanna um, change it to something a little bit bolder, you can. Um, or if you want something a lot more su subtle, then like m moving it down to like four or something, that gives you like barely anything. So it all kind of depends on what you want. I'm going to go back to 10 for myself. But yeah, again, s same rules apply for, for all of these. And then for these ones, th this is actually like a texture tool, but you have a lot of different options. I, I usually use um, hatching the most, like... Um, Friction is probably one of the things I use the most to making like um, tree bark or something. And uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of different tools you can use for this. And like the diagonal lines, I use a, that that quite a lot for like making like yeah tree texture, I guess. So yeah, it all kind of depends on like what you are making exactly. And they're they're even like labeled here for you to depending on like if you want to do like a, a desert scene and whatever like you can use like the the gauze here, or or the like the sand too like the the sand is pretty helpful. So yeah, it all depends. Um, I'm just gonna stick with friction there for now. And then eraser is probably the most simple self-explanatory one. However. All it does is erase, and again, you like erase your mistakes. And again, you can um, you can change it. Whatever, I always just go with with a hard eraser because it just seems like the most I don't know. I guess easiest to use. So you can change the size of the eraser if you want. But yeah, so it all all kind of depends. I usually keep at like ten or so, unless I need it for something else. And then next is the blending tool. Again, that can be quite helpful if you're making like uh, sketches and whatever, and you want something to like blend, and you want to make like other type of of shading. So uh, again, I I rarely use this tool, but it's very helpful when you want to make detailed sketches that look very realistic. And then the next one is the paint bucket tool, where you can color your entire uh, your entire canvas a color if you wish. Or you can make a shape of something. Here, I'm just gonna go like that. So you have like a shape here, and then you can you can fill it in like that. And then uh, the this is a gradient tool, and basically all all you have to do is drag from one side of the the frame to the other, 
Oh, um, also a trick that I learned recently, if you hold down on the canvas, then it will automatically, um, do the eyedropper for you, but that's not what I want right now. Um, okay, but yeah, just drag down like that, and you have your gradient effect to go, like, down, and pretty much just anywhere you, you want to go. And it all kind of, it will actually have, like, a lot of different, um, different choices here. I, I usually just do foreground to transparent because I, I like that sort of effect. And then, oh yeah, and also you'll see in some of these, like, the, br the brush sizes are blocked off because there isn't really a brush for them. It's just sort of like a tool, I guess. And then, so the next one is the lines. They're really easy to use. You just drag across the screen wherever you want them and uh, you have lines. And this one is just sort of like a canvas thing that you can do. Just like drag a square and uh, do whatever you want. But I don't ever really use a canvas. I think it's more sort of making like collage looking things, I guess. And then this one is just like a ruler. Like if you need a guide to, towards something, just um, draw with that. And that will keep you on the track, right track. Then the A here is text. You can click anywhere here and you can uh, you can type whatever you want. I don't often use text, but that's that's just me. And then if you want to get rid of the text, just hit the X or you can hit the check mark where, where you like it. And then the next one is a speech bubble. Uh, this is just sort of to you, you'd probably just use a speech bubble to go like to make like a circle speech looking thing and then you would use the A the text to go and type in the speech bubble. And then this one here, I don't really entirely know what this does. I have never used this before and I don't I don't really know what it does exactly. So like if you have this here and it doesn't really do anything. I don't know, maybe I'm just using it wrong, but it doesn't do anything for me. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it, I guess. And if you want to change your uh, colors, this one, you can uh, change it to anything, really. It has a bunch of different things, all kind of like rainbowy colors, and move this circle thing around. And uh, yeah, or you can tap to where you want it to go. That works, too. And um, yeah. And then like the, the, I have like the dark green here as my other color here, which is, which is what I'm on now. So you can change that again to anything really. And that keeps just like two different colors. So yeah, if you wanted to swap between the two of them and whatever, like that's just an easy way, to, way to do that. Cause like if you're making like some sort of pattern and you want to switch between the two, and this is just a simple, easy way to do that, where you can just go like that, go back to here, and then keep just like switching back and forth like that, if you want to make some sort of like two-step pattern. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I guess that's kind of it. If you have any questions about this drawing program, uh, comment in, in, in comment below, and I'll uh, hopefully answer, answer your questions, or like if you want me to make a part two to this video, then I, I will, and just kind of elaborating more on certain tools that are a little difficult to understand. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you guys, that you understand this program more if you're using it or you want to use it. I definitely recommend this program, it's very, it's very good quality tools and whatever. Again, this is not sponsored by any means, I just want to give you a tutorial on the program that I use for my type of like drawings and illustrations and stuff. So um, yeah, it's, it's very good, I definitely recommend it, um, and yeah, I, I hope this video was helpful. And I know it's not something I usually do something a little bit different, but let me know if you want me, me to do more tutorials. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's that's it for, for this week's video. Yeah, I guess I'll see you next week then. Alright, bye!